Hi and welcome to Katie's Corner in Space. I'm Katie and today I'll be reviewing the season finale of Star Trek Strange New Worlds Season 1 Episode 10. I'm going to do something a little different this week as this is our finale and the episode was itself a bit different. First, a quick recap. Future Pike used a time crystal to pop back in time to give his past self a chance to keep the future on the path it's meant rather than attempt to make changes. So present Pike is sent into the future to walk in his own shoes in a timeline he creates in which no one died in the training accident. Romulans are causing havoc and an encounter which should have gone a completely different way changes all because of a different crew and a different leader's point of view. Pike learns the value of the original future and the price paid if he goes through with the changes. Ultimately, Pike decides to stay the course and face the future foretold, while Una is taken for the mistakes of her past. Now, there was a lot of speculation about how this episode would interrupt canon given the meeting of the Romulans. However, we find out quite quickly this episode is not meant to act as canon and is, in fact, a peek into Pike's future if he writes his letter to Mott. The opening scene sort of brings us back full circle to the pilot. Pike is still hoping to avoid the future and he's having breakfast with Captain Patel. Even as the conversation is a bit different, the quality and tone really helped to remind the viewer where we started. Of course, with last week's sneak peek, this scene was no great revelation, but it does introduce the heart of the matter, and it's what gets the ball rolling on Pike's idea of how he can make changes and how he thinks he'll save lives. I think it made a good point once again of showing us how Pike is feeling about this entire situation. Having him flub a wedding as his landing point for a little time travel hijinks was another campy choice for the creators, but it worked, as did his little tour of the bridge looking confused and curious. One of the high points for me is the moment when we see Uhura. The green earrings were just the icing on the cake with her outfit, and it was just a wonderful callback. Now, once they established the Romulans were the cause of the attack on the outpost, it wasn't really an unexpected revelation, but the battle effects were really fantastic. The blasts from the Romulans were just frightening, and the graphics for the ships and flights were very eye-catching. All very well done, in my opinion. It's one thing I think all of these new treks have in common. The graphics are just top notch and only seem to be more surprising as we delve further. Back to the story though, the introduction of James T. Kirk. Now who has not been anticipating this? Oh, I'll be honest, I wasn't really thinking of it when I was thinking about this show last night. I was wondering what was going to happen. But I do recall months ago when the production pictures were let out of uh, Paul Wesley playing Kirk. I'm a big Vampire Diaries fan, and so I have an autographed picture of him, though I did get it at last year's Star Trek convention, believe it or not. So while I'm a fan of his work, I really couldn't picture him as Kirk. I can't say I see him as Kirk now either, but the introduction of Jim was just what you'd expect friendly, a welcome aboard with a little preparation. I think he was written well, vocal about his opinion but understanding of the chain of command. He easily told Pike his ideas but also took the lead once the decision was made. I just can't say if I like the casting but I can't find fault in the writing or the acting. Everyone arguing and then coming together to hatch out a plan was again expected. Giving Kirk a chance to stand out as a character with a plan of his own gave us a quick glimpse of the captain we know. Again, well written. But the destruction of the Farragut was done fantastically well. I cannot stop praising the cleanness of the graphics on these battles. It's fairly easy to follow the action, and even the edits back to the crew add to the action rather than disrupting the flow. Now, my worries about not seeing Law on this episode were obviously not an issue. Time jumps being what they are, she was on the Farragut and beamed over with the rest of the crew. But this is where Pike realizes Una isn't just assigned someplace else, she's someplace no one can see her. And when Spock tells him her future in a later scene, it's like a wrench to the gut. 
I did like the Romulan commander. The introduction of his character, however short, I thought was interesting. Pike trying to start a conversation was a nice take on the problem, but more than that, it gave us a view of an individual who differed from his peers, which made the repercussions that more impactful. It was only a blurb, but I enjoyed hearing what may or may not have been Scotty over the comm as Spock made repairs. Just worth noting. The Praetor's introduction was pretty much what we expected. Pretty stone cold, down to business. The costuming, again, it was really good. In fact, I enjoyed the updated retro costuming for all of the Romulans in these scenes. Top notch. A truly comical yet oh so Kirk moment was done with the borrowing of a shuttle and when he and the drones pop into view, it's, it's truly a great moment. Yes, of course, driving those unmanned ships in the way of a firing Romulan Armada was surely handy, but I will say I did like Kirk's attitude as he told Pike and company where he was and his plan. Out of the box thinking, but effective. Sort of. It was upsetting watching the Romulan commander sacrifice himself for duty. Like I said, getting to know him a bit made the repercussions of his attempts to be decent that much more upsetting. And the fact that the Praetor decided to attack isn't shocking either. Of course, the Enterprise was screwed, but again, I say that scene was fantastic. Though there wasn't much of a battle, just a desperate need to escape. And thanks to Kirk's little armada of empty ships, there was at least a blockade of sorts as the crew of the Enterprise once again attempts to repair and get the hell out of Dodge. This entire sequence was on the edge of your seat exciting. One, because again, it was just really well done and well put together, but also because we have no idea what the future brings in this timeline. And man, seeing the aftermath was just awful. Chapel's description of Spock's status as we see him laying there and the chances of his recovery was heartbreaking. Another great bit of acting for all parts. But finding out how pivotal Spock is to the future and Pike's reaction to the price paid if he makes these changes, once again, I just have to commend Anson Mount. He has had to emote quite a lot for unreal reasons this season, and he just steps up to the plate each time. Now, of course, Pike talks to himself again in another scene, but I really enjoyed that final scene with James Kirk. Pike almost seeming to know how things should have been different, I do have one complaint about this particular scene. When Pike asked to get to know Kirk, should he know some of it if he's such good friends with Sam? Maybe I'm assuming too much, but wouldn't Sam have grown up with his brother? Maybe maybe Pike was just being polite and having him start the story from the beginning. Of course, Pike has decided to follow the path his future is supposed to take, and his conversation with Spock was a nice little add-in. Though sort of out of place in my opinion, it didn't flow that naturally, but that could be just because Spock is quite stoic in his delivery, as he would be. What about Una? Okay, last week I said it's a shame we're losing so much of our crew. We lost Hammer. we are going to see Laan go, uh, Ahura is off to go back to the Academy. What's going to happen next season? Okay, practically Ahura could be an ensign by then and Laan could return as well. But now Una? Seven years in the alternate timeline, she was in prison, but maybe that was also part of the change made by Pike. So who knows? Maybe episode one or two will be an adventure. Save Una! This was a surprising episode. I didn't even consider time travel when watching the trailers and the sneak peek, but it's nice to know the creators didn't fumble with canon too badly on this one. As I said, I can be forgiving on technical changes because we can do more with graphics and prosthetics and costuming now than we could 60 years ago, but occasionally the makers of this universe push it and it gets unnerving. The episode was essentially a reset and thus allows us to see what ifs without disturbing the universe as we know it. I did like the full circle of the season. The big question following Pike was, can he change his future? Can he save the crewmen? And now he knows the answer, and more importantly, the correct question, should he change his future? Maybe this acceptance will come slowly, we may see issues in the future, but I'm more interested in seeing who's going to be coming on board next year. What's going to happen to Una? Are we getting Scotty already? Isn't it too early? And while we're at it, what will happen to Laanne once she finds out about Una? Does she do anything? These questions and more to be answered. 
sometime in 2023, it looks like. But the good news is filming is already wrapped on season two, so it is definitely coming. Thanks so much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe below. Next week, I hope to be reviewing another series. So until then, please feel free to check out these videos. See you next week and bye.